guys, um, Lindsay, I'm here to teach Yin Stream today. Um, we really miss you guys and I hope you're enjoying these online videos that we're creating. Um, obviously can't totally recreate this video experience at home, but uh, we'll do our best. So if you uh, have some props at home, you probably will want them for Yin. If you don't have any yoga props, what I would say the, the super necessary things would be, would be a pillow, a firmer pillow would work for this. Um, and I'm trying to think, like a couch pillow, a decorative pillow that's got a little bit firmer. Um, and then something that would function as a block will be pretty necessary, even a couple thick books, um, a water bottle, something that you can put a little bit of weight on and will support you. Um, and then a blanket, is another great option that can be folded up, towels work if you're at home, anything like that. Um, and the strap, um, I probably won't use the strap very much today, um, just because I know not everybody has a strap at home, but uh, in the future, some of the future yin classes I will be recording would have a strap. Um, a belt would work, scarf, even a towel wrapped around your foot, anything like that. So. We're gonna get started. Um, I'm gonna take the whole class, so there may be some periods of quiet where I'm not talking because we have to hold uh, for several minutes. Um, and I will be glancing at my watch for the time, just so you um, know why I'm moving around and you're laying still. Uh, and if you have any questions about these classes, you can always message us on uh, social media. You can send us an email at hello at mindstreamyoga.com. Uh, of course, without being able to see your body, it can't help with your alignment, anything like that, but uh, just do your best, modify as needed, um, and take this several times if you can and see if your body improves as you go. All right, so we're gonna start in reclined butterfly today. Uh, so taking your bigger bolster, if you have a bigger bolster at home, um, a, a pillow will work, a couple pillows, even if you're in your bedroom, you can stack up a couple bed pillows. And what you'll want to do is lay this out vertically so that your whole spine will be supported. And then take a towel or a blanket and set it right here for your head to come down onto. Then you'll sit down right in front of your, um, take this off so you can see a little bit better. Um, You'll want to sit down right in front with your bolster right up against your sacrum. Bring the soles of your feet together, your knees wide. You might have um, walks close by or even um, if you have an extra blanket or anything that you can use to support your legs here, you might end up needing those. So soles of the feet together, knees wide, pillow right up against your sacrum, lean back. You want to lay down so that you feel supported in the spine. Make sure your head is supported by the towel or blanket or um, prop that you're using here. And then let your arms drop down to the floor, rest on the floor. The chest you'll, will open here, you'll feel a little bit of a stretch in the chest. You will also feel the most stretch here in the groin and your thigh area. If this is too strong for you here in your groin, slide some props underneath your knees. So books would work. Blanket would work, extra pillows would work, anything you can slide under the outside of your legs here to take away just a little bit of the weight of the legs. Remember in the end, we want to be feeling a lot of sensation, so you do want a stretch. It shouldn't feel um, totally restful. <laughs> Yen is meant to be um, somewhat intense in terms of being at the edge, feeling the stretch. So let gravity take the knees down. Relax into this as much as you can, even though you're feeling some discomfort here. Make sure the weight of the head is supported by your props. Your back is relaxed onto your pillow. Your arms are resting on the floor. Long, deep breaths. Feel the breath as it comes all the way down to the low belly, exhales all the way back up. Relax that space right above your pubic bone, below your belly button. I know we're living in a uncertain time with 
an extra amount of stress added into our nervous system. So as much as you can in yin here and in all of the yoga classes we're creating, but especially in yin, as much as you can come back to these nice, long, even breaths, relaxation in your body, even feeling some discomfort, but still relaxing all the muscles. Those nice, long, even breaths will help tell your sympathetic nervous system that you're okay, you're safe, the stress is real, but it's outside of your practice right now. It's in, not here on the mat with you. Just try to let your breath calm your stress. For about another minute here, keep letting gravity take your knees down towards floor. You should continue to feel that stretch in the inner thighs, groin area. Arms are relaxed, your weight of the head is relaxed. more breaths. And when you're ready, start to reach your hands down on the outside of your legs. You're going to help bring the knees back up together using your arms. We're going to transition here, so just roll up to seated, kind of roll off your props, move your props out of the way, place them to the side, you're going to come down to lying on your back. You lie down flat on the floor, you can give yourself a squeeze here for a second, and then coming to what looks like Shavasana, just lying flat on the floor here. And we're going to move into banana pose from here. Scoot up so I stay up in that. So for banana pose, you want to leave your hips right where they are. You're going to shimmy your heels over to the right corner of the mat and your shoulders over to the right corner of the mat. So you bring this C curve into the left side of your body. Both hips stay anchored into the floor. So you're still lying flat on the floor. You just have a bend on the left side of the body should bring a nice subtle stretch into the side body tissue here on the left. If you want to intensify from here, you can take the arms to T, or you can take your arms overhead, making sure you're still resting your arms on the floor so that there's no work in the muscles here. But having the arms overhead will definitely increase the intensity of this stretch in the shoulders. The side body stretch here may feel intense in your body, it may feel subtle. It's still an important part of your body to open, even if it feels subtle. There's a lot of um, asymmetry for most of us in our hips, and the side body really tries to balance out that asymmetry, and so oftentimes we will have some tension, especially in the fascia, in the side body. So just breathing into the space right there above your left hip, below your left rib cage, the waist area on the left. Feel that stretch from the top of the hip all the way up into the ribs and the shoulder. You can always take your left ankle across your right if you want a little bit more. Stay with that long, even breath rhythm. Our yin practice has three core principles. Most of you guys that have taken class with me have heard me say this, but it's an important thing to remember every time you're on your mat in the yin practice. And the first of those principles is we want to come to our edge. And the edge in the physical body means where your natural flexibility stops you. 
And if you were to push beyond it, you would have to use your muscles to either pull you deeper, pull, push yourself deeper. So we want to find our edge and stay there and support ourselves there. Let gravity and your breath and your body weight do the work at the edge instead of your muscles. The edge is also a mental, physical, spiritual place for a lot of us. It's a place that feels uncomfortable to spend time. Uncomfortable physically because it's a stretch and you feel some of that kind of discomfort of a deep stretch. It's also uncomfortable to be still in times of discomfort. And never has that been more apparent to us than right now in this moment in time in our world. And so still honoring this practice, this pillar of yin practice to find your edge and to be here in the discomfort in your body and in the world around you. A couple more breaths on this side. Really heavy on the floor, let gravity pull your body down into the mat. Relax any tension in your body. And then start to shift to the other side. So shimmy through center over to the left. You'll take your heels over to the left corner of the mat, your shoulders over to the left corner of your mat. Now this banana shape is on the right side of your body. Remember your hips stay planted on the floor. So we're not peeling up off the floor. You're still lying flat. There's just a banana curve, a C curve, through your spine, through the right side of your body. You can take the variation of having arms at T resting on the floor or arms overhead resting on the floor. You can also take the right ankle over the left, crossing at the ankles there if you want a little different sensation. Heavy on the mat, relax your shoulders. Long, even, deep breathing rhythm here. Finding your edge, so finding your natural stopping point and your flexibility, and then staying there. The second core principle of the yin practice is about stillness and the importance of finding stillness in this practice. Once you've found your edge, the goal is to remain at the edge and be still. It's a very difficult physical challenge for some of us to be at a place of discomfort in our body, to feel that uncomfortable stretch and not fidget or not shift away from it. And so it's an important part of yin to start to cultivate stillness in the physical body so that you can stay at your edge and really change your deeper connective tissue and joint tissue without the muscles coming in to protect. Stillness, of course, also is a mental, physical, mental, spiritual, emotional challenge in this practice, trying to calm the mind. Being really mindful of where your thoughts are as you lay here. Sometimes when our body is still, our mind wants to take advantage of that opportunity and start to fill itself with thoughts and lists and worries. And so this might be the most challenging and the most important pillar of the practice is really finding stillness, not only physically, but mental, emotional, spiritual stillness in this moment. A great tool to cultivate stillness is to count the breath. Just focus on the rhythm of your breath here in this posture and in the postures to come. Take a few more breaths on this side. And start to come back to center. Unwind your legs, shimmy your heels back to the center of your mat. You're going to pull your knees back up into your chest, give yourself a squeeze, reset the pelvis there. We'll make our way up to seated. Coming into 
a seated forward fold or caterpillar as it's called in yin. You want to make sure that your sacrum is vertical here. If you feel like you're kind of collapsing at the waist, dumping back in the pelvis, you can start by just kickstanding yourself here in the vertical spine position. Try to get that initial alignment in the pelvis. You can stay here for the whole posture and just work on relaxing the legs straight and engaging a stretch on the back side of the legs. Otherwise, if you're pretty stable in your pelvis and you aren't collapsing there at the waist, make sure your legs are about hips width distance apart. If your legs are relaxed, you don't need to have any flex and flexion in the ankles. And then we'll start to lean forward from the hips. So you want to think about bending at the hips, bringing your belly down towards your thighs, leaning as far forward as you can with the back still pretty straight. That pivot from the hips is what's going to engage the stretch along the back side of the body here. Remember, this is not a powerful, muscular forward fold. We're not reaching for the toe and pulling ourselves down. For most of us, as we come forward, we will hit that edge, and it will be less far down than we think we could go if we were to pull ourselves down. But in the end, the point is not to go as deep as possible. The point is to come to your natural edge and support yourself there. So as you come forward and you find that natural edge where you feel a lot of sensation, you have a couple options to support yourself. If you've got a big pillow at home right now, you can put that in your lap and just kind of roll forward over it, let the head hang. Make sure as you roll forward over it, you're still bending from the hips. You still have a nice amount of engagement in the back side of the body for the stretch. You might also prefer to stack books or a water bottle or blocks if you have them and support your head that way. You can adjust your props as you get here into alignment to find the depth that gets you to your edge. Wherever that is for you. I prefer the, the bolster in the lap. I'm gonna switch back to that while I sit here in the posture with you guys. The third pillar of the yin practice is related to time and the fact that we stay in these postures for an extended amount of time as compared to other types of yoga. Time's really important for the nervous system. It gives us the ability to really calm the initial response in some of these postures because of the discomfort. You might have an initial kind of nervous system response telling you you want to move away from it. So we need to stay here longer in order for that response to calm in the body. We're also working with deeper tissues, connective tissue, and connective tissue does tend to take a little longer to respond to stretch. I like to make the analogy that if you think about muscle tissue as a bungee cord, connective tissue fascia is more like those nylon straps that, that you would ratchet down onto something like a, a load on a trailer or something like that. So a bungee cord is going to stretch really easily and rebound really easily, a nylon, a nylon strap is going to have just a little bit of stretch in it and is going to be a much stronger, denser, thicker tissue. So we really can't force connective tissue to stretch any more quickly than it does. And that's why we're here for longer amounts of time in each posture. I think time is also a luxury. And I know here in a home practice, we're in a whole new paradigm in terms of how you're spending your time. But typically in a studio class, I say, you know, how often in your day are you just doing one thing at a time? And so here in these postures that we hold for several minutes, let yourself be fully present in the few minutes that you're spending in each posture with no other interruptions. Now, that being said, I know some of us have kids and dogs and family and work from home and all that stuff going on in the background, and so give yourself grace. There's no right or wrong here. Just honoring the time that you can give to your practice, however long that is today. We'll have about 30 more seconds here, so if you want to let a little bit more weight surrender to gravity, come a little bit deeper in the posture. 
to come back up. You can move your props off to the side. We're going to come to seated, just an easy pose here. So for those of you that are comfortable in a, in a standard easy pose seated position, you can stay like this. If you need a little bit of support in underneath your legs to make this comfortable, um, your towel or a blanket is a great tool just to slide underneath the legs. We're going to be working on more of a side, side body here. Um, so if this is really just to relieve any tension that you have in the inner thighs that would make you um, kind of be reactive to the stretch there. I'm going to remove mine because I don't need them, but I wanted to demo that for you. So here in easy pose, you're going to take a block or a book, something, even a firm pillow, just something to support a little body weight on your side. You're going to place it right about hip level, right next to you. Keep both hips grounded in the floor and place your forearm down on this block. Your right forearm goes down onto the block or your pillow, whatever you have. Anchor your left hip and then take a big inhale, lengthen through this left side body and find the forwards, the, it's not a forward fold, find the side bend. So really important here that you aren't rolling forward into a twist with the left shoulder. It's much more of a uh, direct side bend. Both your shoulders stay parallel to the wall in front of you, okay? So the stretch should be in the top of the left hip all the way through the left waist and up into the left rib cage. If you want a little bit more, you can let the head dangle to the right and take your left arm up over your head. Anchored in the hips, especially if you start to notice that you're peeling up off the floor on the left. Think about relaxing through the groin. Soften that spot right above your pubic bone, below your belly button. Let gravity pull your hips and your legs down into the floor. And then think about your breath expanding this space here on the left side body. Really focused on side body work today. I personally believe a lot of us store tension in our side bodies. Side body does a lot of work to stabilize asymmetry and unevenness in terms of strength and flexibility on the front and the back of the body. So the side body is a culprit for a lot of our issues, even if it manifests in your hips or your knees or your low back. Continue to focus on anchoring the left hip extension through this side body space. You might feel that stretch pretty strong here. It might be subtle for you, kind of depends on your body. But again, we're working to open this whole line of tissue. Connective tissue is this web that goes through every part of your body. It's not just one distinct strap. So when we do something like these side bending postures, we're really focused on the entire stretch of connective tissue from the hips all the way up to the shoulders and how that tissue interacts. Because if your hip is a little bit out of alignment, your shoulders are probably going to have some type of, uh, be affected in some way because of the way the connective tissue brings them together. So, a couple more breaths here. Anchor in the left hip. Breathe out into your left waist, your left rib cage. Feel that stretch. And then push into the floor as we transition here. You'll drop your left arm down into your left. Push into the floor with your right hand. Come back up to neutral. We're going to switch sides. So take your block or whatever prop you use on the right. You're going to move it to the left. Same alignment right next to your hip. I know you can't see this as well in the video, um, but it's the same on the other side. Place your forearm down onto that prop. Anchor your right hip this time. Relax your legs. Again, if, you're, if you notice that your knees are kind of having a tendency to lift away from the floor because you're feeling stretch in the groin, you might support them with blankets. 
Anchor your right hip, find that length through the waist and the rib cage. Lean over to the left, make sure your shoulders are parallel to the front. You don't want to come into a twist. We're not looking to twist forward with the right shoulder. Stay really parallel in the shoulder. And then if you want a little more, you can take the right arm up and over your head. Let that angle. Relax your legs and your groin. Think about extension through the side body. Your arms are relaxed here. It's kind of supported by the head. This may feel strong or it may feel subtle in the side body. It's, again, it's not necessarily right or wrong if you feel more or less of a stretch here. We're just looking to bring all of that tissue into a stretch. great tool in yin if you're new to yin, especially if this will be your first time or first couple times taking yin ever and you're doing it at home. Really focus on the breath. When your body gets uncomfortable in these positions, these postures, especially because we're holding them for time and we're here for at our edge, your breath will be the thing that keeps you still. It helps your nervous system to regulate. At any time, you can drop your arm back down into your lap too. You don't have to leave it up if it's too strong in the shoulder. your props back off to the side. We're going to transition here from seated into cat or into tabletop. So coming into tabletop here on your mat, you want to get your alignment right first. I know most of you probably aren't practicing right in front of a mirror, so just feel this in your body. Make sure your knees are right underneath your hips and your uh, shoulders are right above your wrists. You want a nice foundation here before you start to move. And then we'll take several rounds of cat-cow. Starting with cow, drop your belly. Inhale, big inhale, fill your lungs. Tailbone comes up, chest comes up, gaze comes slightly forward. You want a big stretch there on the belly and full inhalation in the lungs. Once you can't take in any more air, start your exhale, round your spine, tuck your tailbone. Drop the head to cat pose. Exhale everything out before you move. And then inhale for cow. All the way to full lung capacity. And then exhale for cat. Really slowly here. The goal of this movement in the yin practice is not the speed or even really the movement itself. The goal of this is the breath meditation. I want you to notice and feel how long it takes your body to get full lung capacity inhale and full lung capacity exhale. By taking in that amount of air and letting that amount of air out of your lungs in a rhythm like this, 
your nervous system knows that you're okay. It senses that you're not in danger. If your breathing is really even and deep like this. So it's nice and soothing for the sympathetic nervous system. It helps to calm down that fight or flight response that we all might be feeling a little bit more of right now. It's sending a bunch of oxygen into your blood to take these big deep breaths. And you are getting the benefit with the inhalation and the exhalation. You are getting the benefit of the extension and the flexion of the spine and how that stretches out all of your connective tissue in your belly and along your spine. A lot of that connective tissue is harder to get to in some of these postures just because it puts our body in a more vulnerable and intense alignment. So cat cow is a great way, again cat cow is a great way to get some stretch for the connective tissue in your abdomen and the connective tissue along your spine in this kind of dynamic meditative movement. Two more full rounds, inhaling till your lung capacity is totally full and cow you can't take in any more air and then start your exhale moving slowly and trying to get to cat pose right as you exhale out your last little bit of air. Finish up one more round and then we will meet back in tabletop. And once you're back in tabletop, we will come to puppy pose. So you're gonna keep your hips right over your knees, right where they are, and just walk your hands forward till your forehead comes down to the floor. Your arms are extended here. So your hips stay right over your knees. Check my alignment, okay. <laughs> hips right over your knees, your arms are on the floor. You wanna think about letting your heart come down through your shoulders towards the mat. If this is too strong for you, you can place a pillow or a blanket or something underneath your sternum. This should feel pretty strong in the shoulders for most of us. It's really where it's targeting. Stay with your next long, even breath. Not here quite as long. Check. Got about a little less than a minute left on this posture. few breaths. We don't hold puppy quite as long. It's pretty intense. As you're ready, we'll start to push back up to tabletop. And then from tabletop, <clears throat> taking the transition into uh, dragon pose, runner's lunge. It's known as dragon pose in the yin practice. It's runner's lunge in vinyasa, kind of in standard physical exercise vernacular. So your right foot towards the right corner of your mat, big step forward. You want this big angle here in the pelvis. So if you're, if you're more like in the 90 degrees, you're gonna have a harder time getting the stretch that we're after. So I want you to take a nice big step forward, make sure your back hip can come down and forward. So what we're targeting in this posture is actually the back hip. So the front side of the left hip right now is the stretch that this posture really creates. That's why it's called dragon pose because we're stretching the hip flexor, the psoas, all of the connective tissue there on the front side of your left hip, a very notoriously tight area for many of us. It's very normal here for you to feel a flush of heat. It's very normal for you here to get a little bit irritable or irritated by the sensation you're feeling. This is a vulnerable part of our body, the hip flexor area. Your nervous system is giving you lots of warnings that discomfort in this part of the body could be dangerous. 
And that's part of the discipline of the yin practice is learning how to manage the response of your nervous system, being really discerning with what is actual pain, what's actual danger in your body, and what is just discomfort that you're reacting to. If you're feeling actual pain, of course I want you to move. If this is just an uncomfortable stretch, which for most of us it is, I want you to breathe and continue to breathe. We'll stay here for about 30 more seconds. Keep thinking about letting gravity take your left hip down and forward. Your hands can be on a pillow, your hands can be on blocks, your hands can be fists, supporting weight, whatever feels best for you. Try to soften the resistance in the rest of your body. I know it's intense. And about 15 more seconds. One more breath to soften and deepen the stretch here before you transition out. And then when you're ready, exhale, move your hips back, straighten out your front leg, a little counter stretch. We're gonna come back through tabletop. You can take a downward facing dog or from tabletop, you can just straighten out the leg, do a little movement to reset. And then we'll transition to the left. So you'll take a nice big step forward on the left. Make sure you have that big open angle on the pelvis and the back leg so you get the stretch that we're after on the front side of the back hip. So on this side is the right. I stay on my um, fists usually. Sometimes I use blocks. If you have blocks and you need a little bit of extra height here, and then let gravity pull your hip down and forward. Think about there being a string tethered to the front of your hip and I'm pulling you down and forward towards the front of the mat. That will give you that strong stretch sensation on the right hip. Try to relax your belly, minimize the tension in your shoulders, your jaw is loose. Part of this practice is learning where your body wants to tra transfer your tension. So here, as we stretch and open the front side of the hip, the tendency might be to hunch the shoulders or grip the teeth, especially if it's really uncomfortable. I want you to think about using your breath as a tool to exhale out that extra tension. Help your nervous system to remain as calm as possible here by staying in your natural breath rhythm. If you notice your breathing starting to shorten or your belly starting to tighten up, use a couple exhales to deepen it again. Relax your belly. A little less than a minute on this side. The benefit of this dragon pose is so profound in the body. Just think about how much you sit during the day, especially all of us that are now working from home. You may be walking, moving even less than you were previously. Maybe you're doing more, that's great. But regardless, we all sit a lot. And when we sit, it artificially shortens this space in our body. And over time, this tissue adapts to that shortened position and it tightens down. A lot of us exacerbate that by having weak glutes and weak core so that the hip flexors have to do extra work then to stabilize because our glutes aren't working and our core is not working. So this area is very tight on most of us and it is going to be very reactive when we ask it to open. So just be graceful with yourself, use your breath. We have two more full breaths here before we transition. Try to deepen a little bit more in these last breaths. And then we'll transition, shift back, straighten the left leg, counter stretch there as you transition and then pull the legs back to tabletop you can take a downward facing dog you can stretch out the legs straight in your tabletop whatever feels good from there we'll meet back in tabletop and we're 
going to come into half pigeon, or uh, it's called swan pose in Yin. So now taking uh, the other side, so we, were, we just stretched the front of the hips. Now in swan, we will target the outside of the hips, and we've already gotten the inside of the, the hips and the groin area in reclined butterfly when we started. So trying to move all the way around the hips, in addition to our side body release, should feel like a nice well-rounded practice for you. Take your right knee forward. Your right shin will come towards the front of the mat. It does not have to be even or parallel to the front of the mat. It just needs to come forward out of the way of your hips. Your back leg is straight. The top of your back leg is on the floor. Your hips most likely hover. As long as they're parallel, you have the choice of just letting them hover or you can use a blanket or a towel, whatever you have, a pillow. Slide it there underneath and give your hips some kind of support there so you can let gravity take the hips all the way towards the floor. What I don't want you to be doing is kind of pushing against the floor with your legs because it's too strong in your hips. So support your hips as much as you need to. Keep them parallel. You should primarily feel this in the outside of your front leg. Then your choice from here is if to stay up on your arms is fine if you're really focused on finding relaxation in the hips. If this is very, very strong for you in your hips, I recommend staying up on your hands just so that you can practice surrendering in the pelvis. If you're able to surrender the weight of the pelvis, still feeling some sensation but able to surrender, you can come to the forearms or all the way to the floor and check here. Relax your belly. Let gravity pull your hips down into the mat. Most of us are going to feel the stretch, like I said, on the outside of the right leg, the right hip. You might also feel a little bit there on the front side of the left hip. Getting a little closer to the mat here. Time to tune in, listen to your breath, calm your breathing rhythm, calm your heart rate. to come back up to your palms. Transition the right leg back behind you. Move your prop out of the way. Down dog is great here, or you can just take tabletop, stretch out your legs. We'll move to the left as you're ready. So pull your left knee towards your left wrist. Your left shin comes forward. Right leg straight back behind you. The top of the right leg is on the floor. Make sure your hips are parallel, even if they're hovering. Your choice is to let them hover a little bit or to use a towel, pillow, whatever you have. Slide it in here. Give your pelvis just a little bit of support as you let gravity take your weight down towards the floor. Like I said on the other side, if you are still working on relaxation in the pelvis, I would recommend staying up on your palms just from a mindfulness standpoint. It gives you more ability to focus on relaxing the pelvis. If you're able to relax the pelvis and let it kind of soften towards the mat, then you can come to the forearms or all the way down to the mat. Finding that 
Nice, even breathing rhythm here. Again, the main place most of us are gonna feel swan pose will be in the outside of the front leg, about the front hip. So on this side of the left, mostly feeling a stretch there on the outside of the left hip. You may also feel a stretch there on the front side of the right leg. Try to really soften your belly. Relax your jaw, your face is nice and relaxed. Scanning your body for other places where tension has crept up and let it go. Stay with that nice even breathing rhythm. You can always count your inhales and count your exhales as a way to stay focused on the breath. A little less than a minute here. Deep breaths. And start to come back up onto your palms. Pull your left leg back behind you. Move your tops out of the way. Tabletop or down dog again here to shake that out. Meeting back in tabletop, we will take child's pose for a few minutes here. Knees wide, toes together, hips down towards your heels. Lots of compression in this posture. Your knees are in compression. Your hips will be in compression. There's a big extension in the ankles. There's a lot happening in the body here, so just take your time using the forearms or the, the forehead to the floor, the arms out in front. Your hips may hover above your heels, they may touch. You just want the weight of the hips surrendered down towards your heels. If that's too strong, you can use a blanket here or a towel or whatever you have in between your hips and your heels to give you a little push in there. Otherwise, let the hips surrender down towards the heels. Your arms are extended, forehead to the floor. Lots of compression here in the lower body. The stretch there in the low back. It should feel pretty good in child's pose. There's a lot going on in the body still, but it is a opportunity for connection to the mat and to your breath. Because you're face down here and all your vulnerable parts of your body are covered, this is a really relaxing posture from a nervous system standpoint. It is an opportunity to kind of reconnect after those stronger postures we just did. See if you can count your breathing rhythm, make it really even on the inhale and exhale. Maybe even notice your heartbeat here. Just a really moment, a, a, a really opportune moment for some mindfulness, for tuning into just what's happening around you right now, in your home, in your room, wherever you are. Let go of the thoughts and the worries of what's happening outside. And just notice the sensations, the sounds, the smells, the temperature of the space around you in this moment. We'll take a couple more breaths here.
You start to transition back up to tabletop as you're ready. Any other movement you'd like before we come back to the mat. And then as you're ready, we'll make our way into lying down on your back. Finishing up with a twist and then Shavasana here. So as you lie back down, give yourself a squeeze. And then both knees will drop over to the left. Your right shoulder stays on the mat. If you need a, a bolster or a pillow or a blanket underneath the outside of your knees, go ahead and place it there. You want to make sure that the weight of your legs is surrendered so you're not holding up the weight of your legs with the muscles in your legs. So if they rest on the floor, that's great. If they need to rest on a pillow or a blanket over there on the left side of your body, that's also fine. Arms can be at T. They can be up over your head a little bit. The important thing here is that your right shoulder stays on the mat and your legs are over to the left, which creates the twist through your spine here. Twisting is really a tonic for your body. It has both re rejuvenating and relaxing effects. It's going to add some energy into your system because of the compression on the spine and how that affects the nervous system with stimulation. It's also going to relax your body because the compression through the belly creates a little bit of movement, manual movement in your digestive and elimination systems, kind of cues the parasympathetic nervous system, that rest and digest part of our body. It cues it to come on. I love twisting. I always say in every class that twisting is something we should all be doing at home every day. And no, most of us are home all day every day. <laughs> so. Take this opportunity, if you can, to just add a little bit more twisting to your life, even if it's in bed before you get up in the morning or before you fall asleep at night. So just spend a few breaths on each side of this twist, letting your spine mobility be worked on and your belly have a little bit of compression. It will help your spine mobility, it will help your digestion, it will help your elimination. It'll help your stress. Take a couple more breaths here on the left. center. If you want to grab your knees and give yourself another squeeze before you go to the other side, that's fine. And then drop your knees over to the right. Left shoulder on the mat. Same thing on this side. If your knees are hovering above the floor, I suggest adding a, a bolster or, or a pillow or a blanket, whatever you have underneath your knees so that you can drop the weight of the knees to the floor. And then your shoulder, your left shoulder is on the mat so that you have these two anchor points, the left shoulder and the right, the knees over to the right, anchored there. And then arms at T, arms over your head, whatever you did on the other side. Relax the weight of your body into the floor here. Let gravity do the work for you. And just breathe into this compression in your belly, feeling maybe some gurgling, maybe some movement in your digestive system, that's all normal. As well as the compression and the twist here in the spine on the back side of your body. Stimulating your nervous system a little bit, helping with tension and release through all of the tissue between your vertebrae. Twisting is just a really important functional movement and a lot of us don't do enough twisting during the day especially if you work at a desk a lot so take the opportunity again here in your practice especially if you're at home right now and have 
extra time to take care of your body right now. Just to add a little bit more twisting into your life. Even if it's just a few breaths on each side before bed at night and when you wake up in the morning. Check back in with your breath. Nice, even breathing rhythm in and out. That even breath rhythm and the full breath inhale and full breath exhale that we cultivated during cat-cow. Staying with that nice long breathing rhythm really helps the nervous system across the 60 minutes of this class to feel consistency, which leads to relaxation and a sense of calm in the nervous system. The variability of our breath is very, our, our nervous system is very sensitive to that. And as you can imagine, our primal brain understanding that as the heart rate and the respiratory rate increases, it typically means that the body is under stress, that there is some stimulation that is creating that fight or flight response. So the more that you can really intentionally cultivate evenness in your breath, the more that your nervous system reads that as calm and will lower that fight or flight response. Last couple breaths here. back to center, hug your knees into your chest, any final movement that you like here before you transition into Shavasana. We'll take a few minutes in Shavasana and then I will come back to you to finish out the class. So we'll just lay here in silence for these next couple of minutes. Make sure you take up some space on your mat. You can spread out your legs and your arms. Notice that your full body weight is supported by the floor. You don't need any engagement or tension anywhere in your body right now. Coming back to those three core principles of being in practice. We want to be at our edge. We're practicing stillness here. And we are here for time. A longer amount of time. Mindful in this moment to use your breath, calm your nervous system, and when any of us are under extra stress or an extraordinary amount of stress, depending on how what's happening in the world around us right now is affecting you personally. And so in these moments of relaxation in your body, really try to allow the mind to follow. Counting your breath here. Feeling the belly rise and fall. Heading into
moving your toes. Gently coming back into some awareness of your room. Taking your time as you transition back to seated. You're welcome to stay here and seated or even in Shavasana for as long as you like. I remember with Yin, we've spent the whole hour on the floor, so you don't want to jump right back up to movement if you can avoid it. Taking your time. Bring your hands to heart center. Take an inhale here and an exhale. One more big inhale together. And exhale. Joining me for Yin, we will try to bring more of these classes to you over the coming weeks and hope to see you soon back in the studio.